On uh, behalf of the University of Waterloo and the Waterloo Institute for Sustainable Energy, or otherwise known as WISE, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this year's conference uh, on resource recovery and all things essentially related to uh, solid waste management, materials, sustainability, and things like that. Uh, I'd like to thank Carol and her team at the Canadian Plastics Industry Association uh, for all their support and uh, continuing support over the years in uh, mounting these conferences. Thanks also to the organizing committee, uh, Joe Ruska, Fergal McDonough, uh, Jay Stanford, Franco Baruti, and a bunch of others who've helped put to the, together this extensive uh, and interesting program. I would also like to acknowledge and thank uh, in advance the many speakers that we have over these two days coming from various places across Canada, the US, and even Europe. Um, for taking the time out of their busy schedules to, to make this trip to Waterloo, which is not always easy with the construction and uh, things going on. Uh, also, I'd like to announce that to show some leadership and sustainability, uh, WISE and our conference partners are committed to uh, making this event carbon neutral. All the greenhouse gas emissions associated with uh, attendee travel to and from the event and also associated with the emissions from cooling and lighting this event space will be offset using uh, quality verified and local carbon offsets. And these are being provided from Walker Environmental's East Landfill, Landfill Gas Utilization Project in Niagara Falls, Ontario. Uh, we'd like to thank our partner Walker Environmental for quantifying the greenhouse gas emissions and uh, providing and donating the offsets uh, to re achieve this uh, carbon neutrality. Uh, to facilitate this process, I would ask everyone to uh, fill out one of these um, survey sheets, which will be distributed if you haven't got one yet, uh, a little later this morning, uh, to give information about where you've traveled from and where your, what your travel mode was. Um, there is a space for your name and organization, but that is optional if you don't wish to share that personal information. Okay, as we get started today, I thought perhaps a little bit of historical context might be useful. Uh, back in 2014, with the uh, support of NSERC, or the, the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, uh, we put together a small gathering of about 30 or so uh, academics, industry, and government people uh, to explore the needs and opportunities for research and development in this area of solid waste management. At the time uh, when we put that together, there wasn't really a good handle, uh, at least within Canada, on the technical needs and uh, the research expertise available. And uh, we quickly discovered during that meeting that the needs were in fact quite great and very diverse. And there is a lot of expertise across Canada, as well as elsewhere, in both academia and industry. Uh, the trick we found out was how to best match these needs and expertise with the uh, suitable funding mechanisms and to try to promote innovations that uh, come out in both the short and the long term. Um, we also quickly learned that the diverse problems are pretty complex and were not going to be solved in, uh, quickly and easily in one small gathering or meeting. And so with WISE and the growing support of CPIA, uh, we've held similar but growing and larger meetings every year since 2014 and today is in fact our fifth annual meeting and as you see in the agenda, fairly ambitious in scope, spanning now two days instead of one with quite a variety of speakers and topic areas. As we've seen over the past four years and included in this year's agenda, the sustainable use of materials and energy is a tough and complicated problem and a lot of different stakeholders are involved. We've also seen, just in the last year perhaps, increasing complications and also growing public awareness through stories in the media about things like the wastes in the oceans and restrictions on recycling material shipments to China, leading to various problems. My academic colleagues and I take on lots of challenging research problems and research projects, many in collaboration with various industries, various sectors, but I have to say, having worked in this area for a while now, that uh, the challenges in this field uh, of sustainable materials and energy management are above and beyond most of the challenges we see in typical research problems. Uh, the diversity of materials is vast. The scale that we're dealing with is enormous. 
uh, the number of potentially interested or impacted stakeholders are quite uh, large. And they range from a variety of businesses, industries, uh, multiple levels of government, uh, NGOs, and of course the public. And I have to admit, uh, sometimes personally, I, I uh, despair a bit about ever finding any uh, good problem solutions or making significant headway. Uh, but we uh, do maintain hope and know that there is hope since we know that most problems can be broken down uh, into subsections and solved with some uh, fundamental parts if we collaborate uh, together on those solutions and work towards implementing those solutions over both the long and the short terms. And I think that's what our program uh, today and tomorrow attempts to do. Um, we've got a bunch of uh, excellent speakers lined up with a wide variety of backgrounds uh, from various stakeholder groups around the globe. And I think that they will help us see that uh, some of these challenges can be broken down into components which can be hopefully solved uh, without losing the sight that, the, uh, that there is quite a bit of breadth and scope of the problems and so not getting stuck in our kind of narrow silos of expertise. And I hope that they'll point out some examples and possible directions of things that have been successful for them and help bring together the right people policies, technologies, and perhaps funding mechanisms together. And so an overarching goal for these two days is to, uh, for all of us to collaborate, uh, network, uh, assemble ideas, bounce ideas around, and uh, as you've seen, come up with a framework for moving forward on materials uh, management in a sustainable way uh, in Ontario, Canada, and perhaps even beyond. And I'm going to uh, leave it to our next speaker, Mr. Jay Stanford from the City of London, to elaborate on some of those goals and ideas about building a sustainable economy and managing and conserving our resources more effectively. So thank you, and uh, Jay. There's a, a button there if you can. Aha, found my presentation. Well, good morning everyone and welcome. I think you don't know this though, but over the course of these two days, there's gonna probably be about 175 people from private sector, municipal sector, academia, filter through. We'd love to have everyone in the room at one time, but it's a tough time of year and there's other events going on. So thank you very much for being here for the start of the show. For my opening address, I'm gonna cover off five areas. There'll be a little focus in the end on London because that's what I know best. I've been with the City of London now for 23 years. Uh, and it's great to see so many faces I recognize in the room here today, but uh, more importantly, are the faces I don't recognize. What we've sort of covered today so far is the mission. You saw this as you signed up, so it's familiar. Bill's touched on this. The words in green, and I hope they do show up, is why we're here. There's some key words that I'm gonna go through over the next couple slides, all very important. Because what is resource recovery? There's probably 40 different definitions, but we'll go with one. We'll go with the one that's here in the province of Ontario. And it's probably the first time we've had one. And you see it on the screen, I'm not gonna read it for you, but I'm gonna read the other words that are highlighted, or other activities. Not sure what that really means. That's about the best part when it comes to new legislation. Doors are open and the doors eventually close. And in this case, it's interesting, they somewhat closed. Because as resource recovery is further defined in this province, it becomes very focused on waste diversion. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. But what we see here in red, out of the waste-free Ontario strategy, is recognition that energy from waste, and in this case, we believe it's defined really as combustion, the facility over in the region of Durham, and alternative fuels, and we're not quite there, a number of experiments going on in this province. They're permitted, but they're not included in waste diversion. We're not sure why not. We're not sure if that door's still open, but we do believe it is. But we've got to wonder how these things work. What we see in that same document, Waste Free Ontario, highlighted, so you don't have to read all the words, the province acknowledges there are gaps. Well, guess what? No surprise there. 
There's gaps in private industry, there's gaps in the municipal sector, and the province has admitted their gaps. Well, the gaps need to be filled. And boy, do they ever need to be filled if we're to move forward, and you'll see that for shortly in some of my, the numbers I'll be presenting. For the purpose of our show here for the next two days, we're going broad on resource recovery. We're going to take those words to other activities and we're going to talk about feedstocks from multiple sectors. Municipal solid waste, non-recyclable or difficult, not so easy to recycle materials. Agricultural residues, woody biomass, animal waste, a long list of feedstocks from different industrial sectors in Ontario. What are those processing technologies? Well, the province is kind of light on what we're looking at. On the right-hand side, it ranges from mixed waste processing, mechanical biological treatment, and the outputs, which vary from materials, energy, and fuel, waste conversion technologies, chemical recycling technologies, right down to energy from waste. In the primer that you've heard about, we've tried our best to define these. And it's not necessarily the best definitions, but they are the available definitions. When it comes to the products, and this is what's largely not understood in Ontario and perhaps elsewhere in Canada, we're talking higher value products in most cases that are not understood. They're sitting on drafting tables, they're sitting on boards and equations, things well beyond my capability in some areas of ethanol and methanol, biochars, biofuels. We have not explored this at any great level. At the same time, when it look, we look at mixed waste processing, we are going to recover certain number of recyclables. It is possible, but we have to look at how we line up these different product streams and where they fit, and they don't right now fit in all cases. So in the primer, you haven't read it yet, but it is an interesting read. It's not a brand new document because it builds on other people's documents, because these conversations have been held before, but they have not been sustained in Ontario anyways, and perhaps in other parts of Canada. In the document, we raise a number of things. We, we raise a number of questions. We could have answered them, but that wouldn't be completely fair, because it was put together by three people with different views, and we couldn't necessarily agree, so we left, then left it as a question. We left it as a question for you in the audience. In some cases, we're not even comfortable with the current direction. I won't say which of the three. I will say I'm not necessarily comfortable with everything in Waste Free Ontario because I think it is lacking. But it is a good document if we can fill in the gaps. And part of this, these two days, is that conversation that's got to occur. So how to get involved? Well, you're here today, so thank you. Over the next two days, you'll become very involved and we'll show you how and why. Over the course of the summer, we're hoping to sign a few of you up maybe many of you, to get inside a much larger tent to become more inclusive. We need people from feedstock suppliers through processors right through to end markets. And we need government at the table at different levels. That tent doesn't exist right now. There's been attempts, but it's never been sustained. And at the end of the document, we actually tell you, we're going to get back together in September or October. Over the course of our two days here, there will be four workshop sessions. Call them, I don't know, I think the buzzword there is world cafes. You get together around a table and you do good stuff. Kind of like speed dating, right? It's going to be speed policy. We just want quick ideas. We want to capture the moment. We want your ideas from the different sectors together. They'll be pulled together and funneled into the primer for version 2.0. The workshop blocks, I think everyone's got it in their package. Four areas, two questions. Each table, scribe and facilitator. And get busy and it's done in 10 or 15 minutes. Kind of cool when you think about it. If you write two words, great, just make sure they're legible. If you write a paragraph, great. If you want to leave your email address for further dialogue, even better. I lost all my wonderful formatting. Oh well. London's perspective here. So I got to stay on time here. And it's kind of cool. We've been involved in this for quite a while when I say we, a collection of great staff working in the city of London, and even more important, our academia up with Franco Baruti and others at Western University, and of course our municipal colleagues and others in the private sector. These are the four things that I think keep us awake at night. Definitions that are out there on popular websites that I'm not so sure they're helpful or accurate, and I think you'll probably agree but the internet is wonderful, but it resurrects the past sometimes. It also resurrects and keeps alive information that that's just not correct in some people's eyes. This one, I, I just don't, 
I don't like the way everything's grouped together. That's the bottom line. I think it's very unfair to those different technologies and then very unfair when all of a sudden they're grouped together and then the comment burning waste. It just doesn't help. But sites like this get highlighted, shot around, and in our case in London, councillors get a hold of stuff like this and they question what staff are doing, which is good. It's good to question, but it's not helpful because it's not a good use of time. Next, how about this one? I got an email, why aren't we recycling in London like they do in Sweden? Why aren't we at 99% recycling? Then you've got to explain to them, Sweden's doing a wonderful job. They have set something in their jurisdiction that meets their needs. They've got 20 EFW plants and they're burning half of their materials and that's how they recover their energy. Perfect for Sweden, not so perfect for London. Yes, it's 99%, but that is not their recycling rate, folks. We all know that, but I'll tell you, these are things that we have to address at the municipal level. Data. If anyone thinks there's a lot of good stuff out there, they are wrong, or please send me the links. We cannot find good stuff. We know you've got it, but we also know this field is very new, and deciphering some of this data is not easy, and let's face it, some of it's proprietary. That's important. The reality is, though, on proprietary data, it doesn't help to move things along. It doesn't, so we've got to find a way to get some common information out there at the forefront, so in our case of municipalities, investors, we have more comfort in this whole field. We also have to understand that when a facility closes, yes, it is sad, but boy, there are learnings that unfortunately are never tapped into, and that is a shame. So it's good to dig wherever we can onto facilities that close their doors. Unfortunately, sometimes we just deal more with the rumors and the rumors get circulated and they tend to grow legs and next thing you know, that's the only thing we've ever learned about the closure of a facility. In London's case, regulatory policy. We're not sure as we look ahead what approvals will be required for resource recovery technologies. Some will be easy, some might not even require an EA. Some will. But what level of EA, we're just not sure because a lot of these things just haven't been tested. Do they really need to be tested or could the ministry just come forward and make some good decisions based on evidence on where things will be characterized? That is a bit of wishful thinking, but you know what? It's based on evidence which the ministry doesn't have. So if I'm in their shoes, I'd be cautious too. It is their neck on the line. Once again, the gap of information to move forward. These ones, this is great. The new uh, food and organic waste framework, director, whatever we're calling it, progressive in many ways. It's opened the doors for something interesting, but the words highlighted in red, we're not sure what they mean. If we were to look at mixed waste processing, for example, we don't have these answers. So how is a municipality to move forward without answers to these questions? may be used if it is demonstrated that provincial waste reduction resource recovery targets can be achieved efficiently and effectively. What does that mean? What is the means test? Where is that checklist of what we have to meet? Very difficult to move forward on that. Now, if others in this room have that answer already, please share it over the course of these next two days because we sure don't have it in London. Looking at the organic fraction, another example. Will it be called, and this is from mixed waste processing or from MBT, Will it be called compost? Will it be part of a, a NASM plan? We're starting to see more of this word compost-like material. Not sure what it means, but it's kind of cool. Or just processed organic waste. All have different definitions, but all rely on the ministry to help set the record straight on this. Once again, residuals from a mixed waste processing plant that contain blue box materials that are regulated. Huh. It seems pretty clear what they can be used for, but you know what? What happens when you finally put pen to paper? We need clear answers from the province on how these things will be finalized. Maybe they're coming, and if they have arrived in certain municipalities, then they need to be shared. If they've arrived in private sector hands, do share. Our last item, just looking at the Ontario Waste Diversion Strategy. It's kind of cool. In fact, it's kind of excellent. They've done some wonky things, putting all diversion together and saying, let's get to 30% by 2020. But it's kind of neat. There's stuff to work with. But what does it actually mean? 
Here's where we're roughly at. These are estimates, folks. Everyone's got a different set of data. But somewhere we're, as a Ontario society, we're between 20 and 25% waste diversion, organics and recyclables. The numbers are on the screen there for you. 3.4 million, not bad. Guess what? In three years, because we've lost a year, we've lost a year and a year and a half, we've got to get another million tons out of the system. We've also got to get waste reduction to get to that 30%. That's huge. Can it be done? I'm sorry, the answer is no. Can we get a whole lot closer? Absolutely. Can we get things in motion? Absolutely. We cannot achieve this. It's going to be unfortunate. That could unravel things or prove me wrong and get busy. But what does it mean to do this? Of course, if you just look at assigning 250,000 tons that need to be, well, disappear. Food waste avoidance. You're looking at 17 kilograms of food not created for every person living in this province. Doable? You well, know, maybe. I got a few people in the audience that completely disagree with that. People working in the city of London, right, Wes? There's ongoing challenges. Are these things doable or not? Where do we as a municipality line up our dollars and cents? Huge just to get the reduction. What about this million tons? Okay, three, three years from now. Challenges and opportunities, but what we can do collectively is be heading down this path and then understand that this target is missed, and I think it will be, it's not the end of the world because things are in motion. But if we were to achieve that, that's the kind of impact, positive and negative, that's going to occur in Ontario. More trucks, more plants, not necessarily a bad thing. Less greenhouse gas, more jobs, all good. That's why this strategy is a good thing to do if we do it correctly. Now let's look out 13 years. And yes, in London, we do think about what others are doing. We do look at regional approaches. That's why we care about this strategy, but we can't understand it. So let's now say we've used their definition of waste diversion, and now we've basically doubled the number of tons recycled and composted in this province. That's wonderful. What approach is going to be left to handle the 8.3 million tons? Is it going to be landfill by 2030? Or are we going to turn our minds to advanced resource recovery? Why we're here for two days. And in fact, as we're turning our minds to advanced resource recovery, we may even find that some of that spills over to help recycled and organics diverted because in fact, we find that there's better environmental and financially more stable systems in place, collectively working together. So London, and I've got about how many minutes here left? 35? 35, thanks. <laughs> Five minutes left. London's had to respond. Unfortunately, we've got a council that's been very supportive. We're looking at resource recovery. We're looking at some neat, cool things. So I'll go through this very quickly in five minutes. We're at 45% diversion. We are behind our colleagues in the room here today. Sorry about that. But very shortly, council will hopefully give us the five to seven or eight million dollars required to play catch up. That's the investment that has to come out of London to get to 60% with all proven technology. Fortunately, we have a council that said, we got to set sites for something more than that. Although we are a community with a landfill, you'll see that in a second, they do want us to be looking at advanced resource recovery, and we are looking at that technologies that we've talked about here today. Our landfill sits in a wonderful area where we own a whole lot of land, and we've already zoned an area called resource recovery. So council has said they want to be not known as a landfill community, but landfill, believe it or not, well, in the case of London, is our best friend. It is a huge asset. It contains our costs. It also means we've got to wisely move forward. So as we move forward, Council said we're going to set up the London Waste of Resources Innovation Centre, something that I talked about probably two years ago here in its infancy stage. Well, we're beyond that. We have an area for set up for demonstration projects. We have a wonderful partner at the bottom. You're going to hear more about Franco Baruti and his team up at ICFAR. We have six memorandum of understanding set up with different companies and associations. You'll see that list in a second. And we've already produced a number of interesting student research papers. These are fabulous to get ideas from keen people who just haven't been around as long as I have. And it's wonderful to hear people that are keen and have a whole lot better ideas. Three PhD postdoc projects underway. And we landed a FCM grant with the Canadian uh, Biogas Association. MOUs. London's commitment to work in partnership with others for the, I guess, to make it both parties better. So we've been doing that now in London. It goes up and down in activity. This conference and why our name is up on the board 
is part of delivering on that because two of the partners, ICFAR and CPA, said, let's join forces here in Waterloo in the fifth year because that's how you begin to spread your wings. On that screen, in fact, there are representatives from every one of these categories, uh, uh, MOUs here today. Some have been active, some have been inactive. There's good reasons because this is not an easy field. We also are so proud to be working alongside about eight other, seven other municipalities in a mixed waste processing working group. You see the participants, a bunch of bright lights looking at how do we push forward mixed waste processing. Lots of strong leadership coming out of places like the region of Peel, the city of Toronto in this area, Oxford County is doing some really cool things as well. We are sharing, we are moving forward. We meet about two, three times a year and we're very active by email when required. Touching off on some of those projects that we're doing at the London Waste Resources Innovation Centre, food waste avoidance, I could talk about this for hours, I won't. But we waste a lot of food, folks. Yes, it's good to recover the energy or the resource value, the compost after, but I'll tell you, doing all that, the material that shouldn't be there in the first place, we've got to question our values there, we've got to balance everything. We're looking at MBT, we're looking at mixed waste processing, solid recovered fuel, we're interested it's, there's not a lot of movement in Ontario right now for good reasons, but there's, there's, there's the potential for it. More dialogue is required on this. What do we mean by the definitions that the province has provided to us? What do we mean when we start looking at the chlorine, the mercury content? What is going to be something that is acceptable to the industry that is to use this material? The project I mentioned, renewable natural gas. Is this a fuel of the future? We think so. Some good work has been done on this right now. Lots of good work at the Canadian Biogas Association. Um, perhaps some members here today, I know that the Region Appeal and Brian Van Opstel, very big in that organization. They've done some great work. Brandon Moffat as well as a part of that group. In London, because we're working with ICFAR, we are looking at how do you begin to think, and hopefully we'll hear from some of the speakers today when we start blending. I'm down to 34 minutes, right? We start blending together agricultural residues, woody biomass, other materials that are not part of your MSW stream, what happens when we start bringing them together? Because right now they're fragmented, they're dealt with on their, on their own. Purpose-grown crops, can they be brought together as part of energy sources? Technology, we're looking at pyrolysis, we're looking at gasification, we're getting a better understanding by talking about people who are in the business. You don't get that understanding by reading it through textbooks. To end, and I'm right on schedule, We've had a wonderful ride and fully supported by council and we have no reason to believe that our next council in October will not be supportive because who doesn't want to collaborate with other municipalities, businesses and academia to crack these nuts. We can go forward very easily but it requires that network and folks over the next two days we are going to roll up our sleeves and I think uh, I'm going to end at that and thank you very much.